Okay, go ahead and fan those off. Those guys are shooting at you. The stormtroopers, like tennis. Use your, use your laser. Use your laser. Use your laser. Hello again, I am Blunty, and you'll have to excuse me if I look a little, let's call it battle damaged. I'm, I've just, how many hours? A couple of hours, a few hours. Several, come, some hours, come hours? Some hours. <laughs> let's start again. Hello again, I am Blunty. You'll have to forgive me if I look a little battle damaged, because I'm literally just a few hours off the plane back from my adventuring at GTC, the GPU Technology Conference. A big thing that NVIDIA have been running every year to talk about all the new stuff they're doing and all their partners and the people using NVIDIA gear to do cool stuff. And, and I would like to take a minute to again thank NVIDIA for sending me up there in the first place to check out the GTC thingy. It was excellent. It was awesome. It was wonderful. I, I, I even lucked out and got the, like, the nerdiest hotel room number ever, 404. Um, I was I was hoping that I would you know spend one night and get so apocalyptic and drunk I wouldn't find my own room number because then I would have a window to tell a joke about for a full room not found but I didn't get that drunk I behaved myself more or less and there was all kinds of things and self-driving cars and machine learning and all kinds of rendering bits and pieces and and it's just very very nerdy stuff going on I spent one evening talking to a literal nuclear particle physicist kind of guy and it was just Marvelous. I even ran into one of my own viewers there who actually had a stall at the event who was designing a piece of software, a little plug-in for uh, Unity and I think you said Unreal Engine 4, a couple of little game things, that, a little plug-in that'll let people do 360 degree screenshots of their game. So you can take a screenshot that is a virtual reality field so you can then put on your goggles or your ca Google Cardboard or whatever and look around in a full screenshot of whatever was happening around you in that game at the moment, which is going to be fantastic for, you know, multiplayer, MMOs and stuff like that. Anyway, as you may be able to tell, I'm still very, very tired and exhausted, but still a, a kind of a little bit manic and excited about the whole thing as well. Of course, I'm full of caffeine to try and combat the tiredness and everything, so I might be rambling a little bit, but my point I wanted to make in this video was this GTC was all about VR. Everywhere you looked, there was another booth with another guy with the VR helmet in going, because for some strange reason, a lot of people out there don't know how to maintain simple human dignity while they're inside a VR headset. I can't quite figure it out myself. I seem to could do all right when I'm inside a headset. I don't pull the funny faces and stuff. Anyway, so I had a chance to, to, to try out, the, you know, the HTC Vive for my first time because I've tried the other guys. I've tried the other one, the PlayStation VR and the and the Oculus Rift, and I've had to go then and you know the, the the Google Cardboard variations and all that kind of stuff. But the Vive was was the last piece of the puzzle that I hadn't tried yet, so I got to try that out. I did this uh, thing where I was climbing Mount Everest, which was just amazing. This was a literal. Uh, uh, a proper, you know, to scale Mount Everest, and they started you near the top, of course, because they weren't going to do the entire climb. It would take days, weeks. How long does it take to climb Mount Everest? A long time. Anyway, so a little bit of sample of that, you know, with the ropes and you're climbing, you're pulling yourself up, and it was very, very cool, and it looked, well, not quite photorealistic, but damn close. Close enough to, to make you forget that you're inside a game, and I instantly lost sort of all cognition of where I was in the room and the 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 HTC uh, hand paddle thingies whatever what do they call those things I forget I'm too tired the little hand paddle thingies the controllers the wands whatever you want to call them worked brilliantly well some of the best I've in fact not some of the best the best motion controlled stick wand thingies that I've ever tried they were perfect they didn't drift there was no stutter there was no weirdness going on I mean you could put it anywhere around your body and it didn't sort of freak out and turn your hands upside down and stuff but man, that does happen with some of the other wands out there as we all know I'm sure of course I did discover an interesting problem unique to people like me for, with VR and that is when you're inside a, a helmet a helmet inside a VR helmet goggles trying to do a demo trying to record yourself in the demo uh, you can't tell if there's some moron wandering into your goddamn shots like this guy did. I had no idea he was doing that. He just sort of started, they started fiddling with things and bumped one of the cameras at one point, I think, and then just stared into the camera, ruining <laughs> several minutes worth of demo shots that I was trying to record. So aside from the incredible Everest experience, and there was snow blustering and wifting off the thing, and, and the, the, the mountain was, I started to tell this, the mountain was recreated by uh, about a gajillion different photographs and stuff all stitched together over the framework. So, it, you know, it is the Mount Everest you're looking at. Basically what's happened is we've taken 108 billion pixels of images, used technology called photogrammetry, to reconstruct Mount Everest, pixel by pixel, recreated into 3D, 10 million polygons in this room, in this, in this scene, and then used physics to simulate the swirling snow. It was 
amazing. Um, and at the keynote, they got Steve Wozniak via teleconference, and they put him inside the helmet, and he was wandering around Mars. But done the same thing, based on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of, of photographs and scans and all that kind of stuff they got from the rovers and the satellites and all that sort of stuff. And Wozniak was wandering around the planet Mars. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. I'm going to fall out of this chair. <laughs> well, was that was not a helpful comment. <laughs> But amongst the other demos that I tried out, there was one that stuck out at me in particular, which was Star Wars one, of course, because I'm a great big dork. So, you know, the Millennium Falcon came down and landed, and you had to do this simple thing where Han was on the radio going, push this button and push this button, and it was very dry and mechanical, basically. It feels very unfinished as far as a VR demo goes. It's a bit late in the game for something that simple, I thought, but... I was standing on a Star Wars planet and those Millennium Falcon flew by and TIE Fighters were shooting overhead and this and R2-D2 was running around my feet going beep boop beep boop and and at the end of the demo I found uh, the R2-D2 gave me a lightsaber and and I was belting back li um, laser bolts from Stormtroopers. I was under fire. Beep, 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 beep. I had to bat them back with the lightsaber and that is, is pretty much all any of us ever wanted. The instant like you know, when 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 Nintendo came out, you go, hey, here's a here's a little one thing. You go wag wag, and you go, okay, I want I want to play lightsabers with that. And there were a few a few, you know, games and stuff where you did play lightsaber on your TV screen. But let me tell you this: when you're in a VR stage and you're doing that, it all feels so much cooler because you've got the sense of depth. You can see the laser bolts coming to you. You can sort of weave out of the way of them. You go, pew, 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 pew. I mean, I'm sure. I look like a complete and massive dork while I was doing it. In fact, you can tell for yourself from the footage, I suppose. But I was having a blast. And like I said, it was a very, very simple and kind of rushed, put together demo, I feel. But that was, it was the tiniest taste on the tip of my tongue of the potential of such a thing. And, and it made me very excited. And I was very impressed with HTC Vive in particular. It is the best. Uh, VR solution that I've tried so far. And like I said, I've tried, you know, all the all the big ones that are out there. And this one, it, it just... I'm not sure if it was as comfortable as the PlayStation VR headset. I'd have to try them side by side when they're both out in the world, I think. But it felt a little more front heavy. I don't know. But all I do know is the, the one thing is we're excellent. The field of view was damn nice and it was lovely and sharp. And, you know, the, the whole room tracking, I could wander around and then you get the sort of grid framework when you get too close to walls. It says, oh, you better stop. There's the, your, your virtual reality is interfering with your real reality there. So if you keep going, get to run into a wall, then, you know, it's kind of safeguards you like that. I don't know if many people are going to have the space to do that kind of thing in their own homes, but I kind of want to do that because it was a fantastic experience. So, Anyway, also at the show, there was a whole bunch of other VR stuff out there, different ways to interact. Some were tracking you know, the hands themselves. Some had a special sort of, a, basically, a kind of a connect type uh, camera that's designed to snap onto the front of the headset itself so it can track your, you know, your, your wands and stuff even more accurate like that. There was even a company there showing off their prototype for a sort of a depth uh, the sensation thing so your eyes could focus through an image because that is one of the limitations. You, you are staring at a screen through a set of lenses in the goggles so you, your eyes can't refocus to something in the distance and then back again in the foreground that has to be done you know in the game engine or everything has to be in focus which is you know not really the way our eyes work but these guys were showing off a, a, they stacked a couple of different semi-transparent i'm not exactly sure how they did it they did they, they, they did sit me down and tell me about it and i was just like okay but i'm sure when they're ready to go to market with it it'll be a thing very interesting there was 3d uh, screens so you didn't have to use the vr goggles you could be in a 3d environment and one of them worked a lot like the nintendo 3ds the new 3ds does with a little camera head tracking and eye tracking and it was very very convincing as well and instead of the 3ds where it went sort of into the screen this one came out as well so it really did feel you know completely glasses free uh, flat screen 3D effects kind of technology thing. It really did feel like it was something you could just grab onto and media. It was fantastic. There were wireless VR headsets as well. I spoke to some guys there who were working on a wireless one. The structure you're seeing now of the uh, prototype. Of course, the finished version is going to look like slicker and smaller and tidier than that. But it's basically... Um, a bit like uh, the, the Google Cardboard idea, where it's a cell phone and a headset kind of thing. It's all self-contained. There are no wires coming off. But this one, instead of just using your cell phone, which is, you know, varying amounts of power and the battery life is an issue and it's doing other things, it's trying to be a phone as well as... This one is just a Tegra 4-based machine. So it's a bit like uh, uh, the NVIDIA Shield uh, tablet or NVIDIA Shield console type thing as well, which are very powerful, by the way. That Tegra 4 chip is just a monster of a thing. Um, it's all built into one unit. 
So it, the, the, it's going to be sort of an, another platform level. So you've got the, you know, the baby stuff, the, the Google Cardboard stuff that, that you just play with and try out, but it's not really that impressive. And I have tried a few different variations of it. Eh. And then you've got the big expensive stuff where you need a big computer and then your headset and stuff. And then you've got the PlayStation 4, which is the console most experience. But this will be sort of the, the middle ground where it's just a self-contained VR rig and, you, and it's completely wireless and you just slap it on your head and do the thing and the prototypes I had there were working and they worked really well you know the tracking was lovely and everything they didn't have any hand controls I was just sort of moving a spaceship around using my head and stuff and, and looking at things to shoot them it was you know it's just a prototype but it is very promising and that wireless VR thing is going to be something to keep an eye on as well <sighs> but yeah the, the point is the GTC was all about VR it was everywhere so whenever you hear someone saying yeah these vr headsets are great but there's not enough things out there to do with them and that's kind of true but it's true of anything when it first launches it's true of the yeah the, the iphone or any video game console or the apple tv or pretty much any new sort of platform that launches it always launches with a small library of things to do that's just the, the way that the world works um, but what I got out of GTC was not only is there much more software coming, both games and sort of, you know, more practical real world stuff where you can do modeling in, in, in virtual reality, like 3D modeling in a 3D environment and, and moving everything around in, in real practical terms, which is going to make modeling so much easier than, you know, the traditional 3D modeling stuff, which has always had a bit of a steep learning curve on it. This is going to make it much more intuitive. There are a whole different bunch of control methods coming in, not just the ones, but proper hand tracking and full, you know, body rig suits and not, not a big suit suit, but sort of a thing you slip over your hands and one on your waist and a couple on your ankles and stuff. And you can move about, you know, fully tracked in a 3D world and everything for motion capture inside VR and all that kind of stuff. It's very exciting. So that's my ramble. My, my, my sleepless, hot off the plane, caffeine fueled ramble about the VR stuff at GTC. Like I said, I've got a bunch more videos to come. Probably, I don't know, half a dozen at least more videos of various bits and pieces from GTC. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you for watching. I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. GTC was fantastic. Thank you again, NVIDIA. Um, oh, just guys, wait till you see the behind the scenes stuff. Wait till you see the, the server room of the machines that NVIDIA used to emulate the CPU cores, you know, the new ones, when they're working on something, obviously don't make the chip and then, oh, does this work? No, it doesn't work. Oh, we just blew two, two million dollars. No, they, they virtualize them. They, they emulate them in these huge, anyway, I'll leave it until I show you the video about that. Would you like that one next? I think I might want to do that one next. <sighs> but not so tomorrow, I'm very tired. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'm bloody. We'll catch you next time. Uh, I need to catch up on some sleep. It's probably not gonna help. <laughs>